Do you like the cable guy? I love lamp. Well, you've come to the right place. Plenty of these videos in the US and abroad of people pre-wiring properties and and what they've done. So I thought it would be really useful to have that as a all-in-one here in the UK. But the front door here we've got obviously our usual lighting cables, but we also have our standard bell wire for door and a cat six here for if we want to install something like a Nest Hello or a video doorbell or something like that. This is Cat 5E. Uh, PIR. <coughs> Nerd alert! <coughs> Nerd alert! The house is fitted with an automation system called Loxo. Uh, this controls all of the lighting, heating, security, that sort of thing throughout the property. So there's a number of PIRs uh, along with cameras. So as soon as you come into this area here, we have a PIR in the ceiling. So this will initially trigger our lights when we come in. On leaving or whatever, you've got a push button to turn the lights off. And with the lock zone system, you can pre-wire these buttons to do whatever you want. So you could have a global off here that would just turn everything off in the house as soon as you leave. To the right of the door, we have a front uh, WC, PIR up there, a couple of lights, and a temperature sensor. So this is a, will be a wall-fitted temperature sensor. The entire property has underfloor heating, so this can all be zoned and regulated using these temperature sensors. The primary lock zone cabinet will be in here, so we've got all the wire runs for that. Our mains cabling in grey, our data cabling here, purple. Blind cables. Every window in the house is pre-wired for automated blinds, and then it's buried up in the jip rock for use when it's, when it's needed. And our data interlink to the AV hub, which is just next door. We've got a cupboard up here. This is fitted with a light and a door jam switch. So when the doors open, the circuit closes and the light comes on. Close the door, circuit opens, light goes off. We've got a PIR spot just here and a PIR just further at the end there. You can see that hanging out. Hanging out. And to the left, this is sort of the central location we've got our AV hub. Look at all them cables. Guys, look a rainbow. We've got all of our Cat6 runs coming in. The red consists of primarily data, the purple next. These are control cables, essentially. A green for audio return and redundancy. Blue for CCTV, pale blue for Cat6A. That's shielded Cat6A for 4K video distribution. Our pink speaker cable and our yellow audio cables. So the patch panels are just being worked on now. And the rack here is wrapped up. Again, partially finished, uh, needing to then create the umbilicals and just connect it up to the panels. The station's tapped into the ship's umbilical ports. We've got a main bathroom here, a light switch, temperature sensor, uh, PIR, plus a single stereo speaker in the ceiling, which will actually have to be moved to be centered. And we've got the first bedroom, light switch as we go in, and then there's Cat6 green. So this is for volume control. There's a rust sound, 12 channel, six zone audio system going in, which allows us to basically choose our inputs, whatever we want as audio sources, and then select them in each room. And we have a voice data outlet. So this can be used for plugging a laptop, uh, if we use a PBX phone system or something like that, unlikely, but always good to have redundancy. And we have wiring here for another push button light switch. We've then got our pre-wire for our TV location. There's a fuse spur, just to be wired straight into the television, and the switch down below. And then we have our cables. So as I said before, we've got our Cat6A for the 4K video distribution. Two coax, which go through a multi-switch in the loft, carrying satellite feeds as well as terrestrial TV, two data cables for smart TV, that sort of thing, and a green Cat6 for redundancy, or in the future if you wanted to do an audio return or something like that, you could then pump the audio over the speakers in the room. In every room we have a media input, local. So there's an HDMI from that television screen that runs straight to here. So you can plug in a local games console, computer, whatever you like, and a couple of data 
cables just here. And then we've got the master bedroom around here, primary light switch for the room. And then around the corner we have the same green audio uh, for the keypad. Select which audio system you want. And a redundancy for if we want to put in a, a tablet or something like that later. Again, voice data points either side of the bed. And in this particular room, because it's the ensuite, we put two push buttons, so one on each side of the bed head. Uh, these can be programmed with a global on off. So if you get into bed, you can do a, a global off. So all of the lights turn off in, in the property. And then we've got a pair of in ceilings. Again, our standard television setup. Every room is pre-wired exactly the same. And our media input is in the walk-in wardrobe down here. We've got the ensuite. PIR and the ceiling there, along with a single stereo, which will actually be moved to the center so you can listen to music while you're in there in the shower. If we continue backwards along the hallway, we've got our final bedroom, some more storage closets in here, a final bedroom, pair of speakers, voice data, pre wire for television, our media inputs in the wardrobe. The next place we have is the main living room. So, this is a double height vaulted ceiling up here a wood burner stove. To the left as you come in, we've got pre-wire for any PoE touch panel system that might change or be added in the future. We've got a power cable. So in this particular instance, what we're doing is we're just gonna install some iPad minis using launch port. So there'll be one here for control of music or lighting, whatever, from the tablet. There's also a green for audio control. This will actually be left for future, so it will be, it will be mudded over and not used. We've got our TV set up. This is the first location where we have multiple speakers, a 5.1 cinema system. So we've got our standard Cat 6A that's taking our video 4K over, a couple of coax, and three Cat 6. Also onto that, we've got our HDMI for any local input that we might need. And then our left, center, right speakers and a coax for the subwoofer. Up on top of the room, we've got our PIR sitting up there, trigger lighting. Our rear left speaker next to the light switch, a voice data point in the wall here, and then we're gonna be putting a floor box in here. The conduit's there, it's been pulled through. That will just be cut out, floor box will be fitted in. This means that we can put a table above it for a telephone or, or whatever. So you don't have to have a cable strung across the floor. Smart. We've got another Voice data point back here, and our final rear speaker. There's a door to the outside, again, light switch, and we continue through to the open plan kitchen diner area. A couple of speakers up here above the dining area, PIR, kind of centrally located to get you as you come in from uh, the sunroom, which is over here. We've got another TV pre wire, uh, a couple of voice data points here, and on the rear wall here and our media input in the corner. There might be fitted joinery here, so that will be hidden really nicely in the fitted joinery. Again, push button light switch there. There is also a pre-wire uh, for an additional zone. This is speaker cable. This will be a simple rotary knob as opposed to the digital rust sound uh, selectance because we only needed one additional zone. So that runs out to patio speakers, right and left. And just above the left speaker, you've got PIR and one of our Cat6 Blue for CCTV. Outside the master bedroom, there's again another pair of speaker pre-wires and some PIRs for controlling soffit lighting, deck lighting, that sort of thing. And outside the main lounge, we've got a pre-wire here for ubiquity transmitter. So we're going to use um, an RF ubiquity system to A, have an access point out here, but also there will be a point-to-point -point system to the original house, which is actually not that far, it's just over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to send the internet signal from here, just over there, which then links the two properties. Back inside, so we've got the kitchen. Uh, again, our audio control keypad and light switch. This is our second pre-wire for tablets here as well. There's one in the lounge, one in the kitchen, just to make it easier to pick stuff up, set music going, that sort of thing. Here's where our fridge will be. We've got a voice data point, uh, pre-plumbed for cold water and ice, that sort of thing. 
uh, voice data point over here for telephones, push button, PIR up in the ceiling, CAT6 here for a wireless gateway. So there'll be a Wi Fi Ubiquiti AC Pro WAP going in there. Nerd alert! That'll be hidden by the joinery of the kitchen. There's another WAP going in in the master bedroom closet as well to cover that into the house. Utility kind of room in here. Voice data point here for future use if we get any connected dryers, washers, that sort of thing. In this closet, we've got a green Cat6. This is for uh, CD audio return. So there'll be a cassette CD player sitting in here if you really need to use physical media. That uses analog balance, goes back to the head end, and then goes into our uh, rust sand system. Our few spurs are here for all of our kitchen appliances, dishwashers, fridges, that sort of thing, cookers, hobs. Uh, it just keeps the kitchen a bit cleaner and makes them really easily accessible to isolate and turn off. There's another PIR in the ceiling here for control. So we're in the back door. There's PIR just here and that triggers the lighting for, for this area. So if you come in from the garage or the back door or you come downstairs, that will trigger. Got a light switch just here and as we head upstairs, we've got a couple of small rooms up here. Basic landing and then if we take to the left, uh, we've got a small office. This is pre-wired again for push button, light switch, uh, audio control. Got a couple of voice data points. Uh, CAT6A, this was added later, uh, so we can have an additional uh, feed from the video matrix up here if we need to, along with in-ceiling speakers. These will actually be moved to a more central position because they're not quite in the middle of the line. On the other side, this is our other sort of cinematic room setup, you could say. Here, it's actually pre-wired for Atmos 5.1.2. We've got some built-in shelves in the eaves for local input components. So here's our rear left speaker, rear right, our height speakers, left, center, and right speakers. And this is for a sub, but there will be a coax going in there as well for the subwoofer. We've got loads of voice data points up here, just because we didn't really know what the room would be used for in the future. And then there's a small storage closet. It's quite a lot in this bundle. It goes, as I said, back to this head end over here. So we'll have the AVR in here, along with like a PS3 and, and a few other things. And this will also have access to the AV matrix. So that's really it. Not overly complicated setup. It's not that complicated. Well, you're joking, right? Uh, obviously, your mileage may vary. Uh, it depends what you want to achieve. I think the key for a lot of these sorts of things is you always regret the wire you didn't run. Although it seems like a lot for a small space, it depends how it will change and be used over time. I hope this is useful. I hope so too. And uh, I hope that somebody gets something out of it. Don't forget to rate us, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe, get your issue.